Tony, it's a real honour to come and see your garden. <laughs> Tony Kirkham, MBE. You are probably the most famous arboriculturalist I know. Thank you. You um, have been looking after trees or working with trees since about 17 or yep. 18. Yeah, yeah. And you ran the arboretum or the, tree, the mm. trees at Kew for many, many years. Yes. And now you work all over the world. You're advising, talking, collecting yep. seeds and things like that. Yes. So... Um, what, at what point did you realise trees are for me? I think uh, probably when I was about 10 years old. Um, I, I had a, good, a really good school teacher, so she encouraged me. I, I looked after the nature table in the classroom because she knew that I was an outdoor boy. Yes. Um, and I, How did she know you were an outdoor boy? You um, come with scratches and yeah, scars. And, 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 and she could see at playtime that I was straight down to the trees in the playground rather than playing football. Oh, and, right. uh, yeah. and then, and then I, I was blackboard monitor. And so every Friday I'd collect the blackboard dusters and run down to the end of the playground and bash them on the trunk of this tree, the big uh, horse chestnut, to get the chalk off and then put them back in the classroom so they were ready for Monday. And, uh, and I think, and then she told us about, you, because she saw I was interested, then every Friday she would bring things into the classroom and she brought a big bunch of horse chestnut twigs in. So they were all the sticky buds, all swelling. And she said, I'm gonna leave these in the classroom over the weekend and because it's warm when we come into school on Monday they'll be in full leaf and I didn't believe her and I you know, so you know went home rushed into school the following uh, the following week on Monday went yeah. straight up the stairs into the into this classroom and there was this vase full of horse chestnut leaves and I just Amazing. thought some I, I was amazed and uh, and then I from that point I was captivated and of course that was the source of my ammunition for the game of conkers and i just look forward every year to conkers and i think and annihilating the rest of the class uh, yeah exactly <laughs> and uh, and i and i suppose that that really caught my attention then she told us why it was called the horse chestnut and uh, where it came from and uh, and and i was in the scouts the boy scouts i'm a chief scout uh, and all our games were in the municipal parks in darwin where i was brought up and uh, lots of trees Mm. Uh, well, my first, I always say my first qualification in arboriculture was the forester's badge uh, and I asked if I could do the forester's badge and said no you can't do that no one's ever done it before and I said well if, if I don't do it and nobody else does it no one will ever do it so <laughs> oh, well and, done. I, and I persevered and in the end I had a, a weekend camp where I did the forester's badge with a forester in Bolton. I can still remember it today. And I think I thought I was going to get a chainsaw and start cutting trees down, but I had to do it with an axe and saw. Are you, and what size tree did you cut down? I was and what probably age an oak about this, oh, and I, I would have axe. been about 14. Wow, yeah. that's quite good, isn't yeah. it? And cutting it the right way so it yeah, falls in the Yeah, putting a sink direction. in it and felling yeah. it the right way. So, I uh, yeah, I knew quite early on that I was going to work with trees. Mm, but good good on that teacher isn't it to yeah. identify that pick it up and exactly. encourage it yeah. but when you mention horse chestnut trees you see when I was a girl everybody loved them for the same reason yeah. conkers but then you hear there's awful things at Norwich they don't let people plant conker trees because they're dangerous is it or something well they're frightened of children uh, trying to get the conkers and then <laughs> forgetting about traffic and then getting run uh, over so I mean it's and, all this PC world and, and then to when you play the game of conkers you usually end up with bruised wrists because you miss the conquer and hit the so health and safety of, of uh, aren't good with the game of conquers oh dear yeah. that, is that it's a shame in a way I think because yeah. I mean you I don't think many people have been killed with no conkers. I don't think anyone's been killed with a conquer <laughs> but I, I but I, I think the problem with the conquer tree now the horse chestnut is it's under threat from uh, the leaf miner and yeah. we're seeing lots of stressed horse chestnuts that will probably die and bleeding canker. And bleeding it? canker. A, I thought it was a bleeding canker that killed them. And well, I think leaf miner stresses them as well, that then yeah. le the bleeding canker finishes yeah. them off. And so a lot of nurses won't, you probably find it difficult to buy a horse chestnut tree today because nurses won't grow them because, you know, because of that. But I can understand that in a way because if I was doing a tree planting scheme and I put on Aesculus horse yeah. chestnut. Yeah you would think they would be vulnerable. I mean, should you not be advising people not to plant them, or what would you reckon? I'd be, I've got one just around the corner, uh, Aeschylus Indica, the Indian horse chestnut. I think that will 
be the tree that will take over, take on the mantle from the horse chestnut. And the, it's got toxins in the leaf, so the leaf miner doesn't affect it. It's less susceptible to bleeding canker. Uh, and it's from the northern India, the Himalayas, and it loves this hot weather. So it's a good tree for the future. You will still be able to play conkers with it as well. But um, how large does it grow? It, uh, the, size, the same size as the horse chestnut. So just to get... Uh, just to reassure people, in your garden that is probably, what did we reckon, 15 metres by, yeah. you won't be planting it's, here for no, sure. No, it's, it's in an airport. You, yes. I'll show you in a minute, Bunny, to reassure you. It's in, a, it's in an airport and I'm going to be planting it in my garden. I've got a little garden in Wales, uh, so it's going to go down to Wales and, uh, uh, this, this autumn. Right. Yeah. And also, I think a lot of people don't know about airports, um, mm. but if you can just explain why they're so beneficial for people who are buying trees. I think it's yeah. nice to know. Well, I, I love airpots and mm, uh, I've, I've been working with them for a long time. And uh, so we, we don't like growing trees in a, in a rigid container round because it encourages spiraling roots. Yeah. And then when you plant it, the, the roots continue spiraling and the tree falls over eventually. So this has, it's like a, an egg box the, uh, on the outside and at the end of every protrusion is a, is a hole um, and as the roots grow out and reach the edge of the hole they, they're air pruned so they stop and then they produce lots of fibrous off, offshoots you know mm. roots uh, lateral roots off that main root back to the uh, back to the tree so in terms of planting when you take the air pot off and plant it the, a the tree that hardly knows that it's been moved and, and within days, it's it's rooting and, and already establishing. So, and, and tree roots need air, mm. need oxygen. Mm. So the air pot allows that as well yeah. um, with with watering. Um, it, it's fascinating, isn't it? There's a whole business of planting trees. Um, Alan Mitchell, I remember reading, you know, back in the early 70s when I first started out in horticulture, and he was saying that we should plant very small trees. Yeah. We shouldn't worry with food in the initial stages. It's just moisture. We shouldn't stake them um, and all these things. And yet still, 50, 60 years on, yeah. you still see millions of pounds spent on planting huge trees yeah. that will probably die in a couple yeah. of years or certainly won't put on growth and yet if they'd planted a little tiddler next door and hadn't staked it and hadn't watered hadn't done anything it would have overtaken them in probably five years more chance of establishing more chance mm. so how, how can you persuade people how they how can you tell people well, how to plant trees I, because we're all impatient we, we want are. everything now and if you say to someone who's 90 plant a little tree like that they're saying they're gonna you kidding? They're, they're not gonna wait no and i i like to plant a mixture like you so i i'm i still plant big trees and i'm yeah if i think if you buy well, I know if you buy a big tree from a reputable nursery where that tree's been moved and grown on, and especially if it's grown in an air pot. So then people, when people don't perhaps understand this, if a tree just stays in the ground for years, it will yeah. develop the system. Yeah. And it's quite difficult to move it. But if you actually move it every couple of years or yes. undercut it with a blade, yeah. so the roots yeah. cut back and then regrow yeah. again with more fibrous roots. And so that tree's being prepared for that journey. And yeah. it's done over several years, you know, it can be done over, you know, 5, 10, 20 years. But in an air pot, the air, the, you could, the, the air pot can be made larger and larger the longer it's on the nursery. And you get that really good fibrous root system that once it's planted, it's away and, and wanting to establish. Mm. But you're absolutely right. If you invest in a tree that size and you've got to invest in aftercare. Yeah. And that means lots of watering in those first five years yeah uh, but I think if you you know if you're going to spend money on a big tree then you're going to spend money on the aftercare and be responsible uh, but that's often it. not the case is it? Often I remember not the lots case. of planning applications yeah. they'd say you have to plant yeah if you're cutting down this tree because yeah. it's in the way of a new house or something you have to plant six extra yeah. heavy mature standards yeah and they'd pop them in to fill the planning concept and they'd all yeah. be dead a yeah. year later yeah and that's not good is it none <laughs> no. of us like that no exactly. it's cruel Cool. Uh, and uh, and it and it shouldn't be done today. And, and we we should only be planting what we can maintain, what we can manage in mm. terms of aftercare. And we should we should be thinking about how much money we have in a budget, and how how much money we'll need for establishing that that tree, and then work backwards and work out how many trees we can plant, rather than planting a huge number that ticks lots of boxes, 
they'd all fail. Mm. But you can also plant on other people's land. So we're mm. a long way back from a trunk road, and so I ran up the highways and said, can I plant trees on the back of the highway? Yes. It's their land. Yeah. And after about four calls, I got through to the right guy, and he yeah. pulled it up on OS on this computer in front of him. Yeah. And he said, as long as you plant them X meters back from the road, because if you plant them, we're responsible. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I was amazed how easy yeah. that was. Yeah. So I just planted Good. a load of trees there. Fantastic. And I also planted around my neighboring yeah. farmer's barns to hide them from yeah. the road. And he loves it now, because yeah. he said, whereas before they could see all the kit that's worth nicking. Yeah. They yeah, can't they see can't it now. See now yeah. But I didn't, I just put in little tiddlers so they're not yeah. staked, they're not watered. Yeah. I planted them late autumn yeah. and they're fine on their own. And that's good at autumn planting. And I think, yeah. you know, the, with this weather and climate change, we're now thinking about uh, planting times. I was always a spring planter, but I've, I'm very much an autumn planter now. Yeah, and even um, with their leaves on even, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'd be planting this year in September. Uh, woodland plants um, grown in uh, trainer pots, cell grown, yes. uh, and I'll be planting those uh, late September, and then the soil They'll will be still sort of be this warm. Big. Yeah, pr probably about forty centimeters. Yeah, transplant. Um, transplants. Yeah, with a shelter on mulch, yeah. and the ground will still be warm right up till Christmas. So even when they drop the leaves, that root activity is still yeah. happening, and and so by the time you come round to spring and this hot weather, droughty weather they're already established and they and they're they're not mm. um they're you know they're already established and they're looking for water whereas mm. if you plant in spring now the they're chances dead. are you're, they're dead or you're yeah. going to have to really get the water on yeah yeah no that's a very good point mm. or i often use the rabbit spiral proof guard as yes. opposed to shelter because yeah. you need the now, sticks just so a, a, a tip on spiral guards oh god yeah there's a top and a bottom oh. and if you put them on upside down yes they don't spiral so you've got to put them on the right way and usually they'll have a T or a B. Do you know, I've never realised that. And okay. I must have planted a million trees. Yeah. But I must say, I went back to my woodland that I planted 20, 30 years ago. And I noticed that they, some of them have slightly dug into yeah, the trees and, and I pulled them off. It's and that's because I've got them upside yeah. down. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. So the next million I plant in my yeah. next 20 years, yeah. hopefully, I'll get it right. <laughs> But I have to say they're they're fine, but Good. they've just got the spells. Well, stuck you're obviously in them. you're you're keeping your eye on them, and that's the other thing. Trees. Yes. When we plant a tree, it's an orphan. Yes. So we plant a tree, and it's on its own, and it relies on someone like us to come and look after it, monitor it, and do whatever's necessary. And, and you know, if you're if you're watching and looking, then you can see that things aren't working right, and you can adjust it. Mm. So uh, and mm. and you know, we I'm, I'm very anti tree staking. None of us know how to stake trees, and the problem is that none of us take stakes off, so we leave them on for far too long, mm. um, or the tree the tree stake snaps off and the tree ends up holding the tree stake up. So, and, and we use buckles and special ties so that we can adjust the tree ties. We never do. How often are tree no. ties adjusted? I, I always remember Alan Mitchell going back to him in the early seventies. He pointed out that where well, you have the tie and the trunk, and the trunk is fatter above yes. the tie than yeah. below, which is totally the verse. It should be going it like that. It should be tapered. Just shows bottom. you, yeah. uh, and that actual movement. If you don't stake yeah. it, apparently it causes the roots to exactly. branch and yeah. regrow. You see, we need from trees need to move. They need yeah. to sway from an early age, uh, and we're all paranoid on a windy day with a big tree in our garden. But if if they've been allowed to grow properly and they've been staked properly, then the, the tree flexes and we need them to do that from as early an age as possible. And as they move, something's saying to them, we need to put more roots on the prevailing wind side because you know mm. the wind's blowing, the, tr the crown's getting bigger, so we need to put more increment on. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's what happens. If we overstake, that can't happen. Mm. So the tree gets lazy. Uh, and eventually when the stake fails, the tree falls over. Yeah. So what is the largest tree you've planted without a stake? I've planted trees up to 12 metres tall without a stake. Yeah. But That's they've been good. grown in an airport. Yeah. And a good size airport on a good nursery. Yeah. Uh, so that when it goes in the ground, flat bottom and the soil's round, it can't go anywhere. Yeah. And you don't bother to feed your trees when you put them in either? I, I don't. No feed, because in that first year, it's all about uh, establishing an a anchor root system yeah. and finding water. Mm. And so they will not take nutrients up in that first year. 
Uh, it was interesting uh, talking to the soil scientists who work with all the uh, Tim O'Hare, all the Olympic trees. Mm. And he was saying they had all these big trees going in and um, they dug the hole just the size for the tree yes. roots to go in. Yeah. Anything below 400 mil, they just put sharp sand really? because they anything else goes anaerobic because yes. there's no oxygen. Yeah. So yeah. it gives off these nasty gases. So yeah. all this over the last hundred years, people have been banging in manure and stuff. Yeah, total waste totally of time. And I'm and very anti, you know, I do tree planting masterclasses at yeah. Barchams and I advise no tree planting compost. Absolutely. The soil that comes out must go back because that's what the tree's got to get used to. And so long as it, you, you can put that uh, water on in those first few years, that's all it needs. Because otherwise they'll root into the compost and they won't get out into the wide world. Exactly. And that's yeah. counterproductive yeah. again. So yeah. if everybody who listens to this does that, maybe we'll have a few more trees. But the other thing we always get asked on Gardener's Question Time are great trees for a small garden. Yeah. And I love this Turkish hazel. You, you've about fallen this. in love with this. I have, you, yes, I have. I think you'll be going back in, uh, and finding one. I I remember there was a road in Enfield in London I saw and it was lined with Turkish hazels and I thought yeah. that's unusual but it's a great yeah. smallish tree it's not so small though it, but this is this is the contorted hazel so yes. this is Cor Corolla savalana and yes. it's grafted onto come onto Turkish hazel and the, it's a great tree for the future and the yeah. reason I like Turkish hazels is they don't sucker the yeah. same way as ordinary exactly. hazels. Yeah. 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 Um, but if you do, you, do you ever eat a Turkish hazel nut? Have you ever grown? It's a, it's an incredible fruit actually. It's, Edible, like um, the hazel. You can eat it like the hazel nut, but it's got these lovely wispy bracts and uh, sepals, and uh, so it's a really attractive fruit in its own right. But not edible, really. I think you. I, I would think that every hazel not edible. Oh right. Some, okay. Yeah. yeah. But maybe not as sweet as a as a avalana. Right. Mm. So at home, I've got hazel, ordinary hazel, not grafted, mm. and I form them into archways. And so I'm cleaning yeah. off manually all yeah. the shoots that, because they're just covered with shoots. And I do that yeah. maybe six times a year to yeah. get these arched effects. And, and that's clear what base. I'm doing here. I've got it going over here and over towards the house, so we get this. And, and you're going to make an arch over to there, are I you? I am, yeah. And you're going to stick a cane or a wire a, onto the board? I'm going to put a cane across there, now, yes. that, now that it's putting that extension shoot out, and just train that across. It's, it's a free umbrella, isn't it? It's lovely. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice. And it's there all year round, and it yeah. doesn't blow over in winter, yeah. which is really nice. So you've got yeah. some other specials. Tell us about the one in the corner. So I've got the uh, Chinese pearl bloom in the corner. Yes. Uh, and uh, and that, that's a... a, a it's one of my it's one of my favourite trees, um, and it's uh, this is from an original Wilson collection, and um, and it's Wilson collected it in China in China in the early what? 20th century, probably yeah. between 1901 and 1908. Yes, uh, it's Wilson 500, and uh, and it's called Polyothersis sinensis. It's, it's a monotypic genus as well, so only one. one type. And I was hoping and praying, Bonnie, that it. You know when you came today that it would be on song yes uh, and it and it is it's absolutely beautiful and they've got these cream normally the flowers are cream color yes this one they they're they've got that yellow um that yellow tint mm. and um and it's a great summer flowering trees and what 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 we forget now is that a lot of pollinating insects are running out of flowers so these trees that that come in that start flowering now through to September are so valuable for pollinating insects. So from that, you aren't one of these guys that says we should plant native, 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 no, native. No, definitely not. I'm very, you want to broaden it I, out. We've got to. Yeah. If, if we want a resilient uh, treescape uh, by 2050, yeah. by 2030, never mind 2050, we've got to increase the diversity of what we plant. And we can't do that with British natives. And you, you were saying earlier that um, the temperature here will be similar to sort of almost the south of France in, 50 in, in, years. in 2050. They're saying Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, it's gone from uh, it's gone from Bordeaux to Barcelona. So it's moving uh, fast. And, and by the time we get to another five years, we may be, you know, Marrakesh. Um, who knows? So it's what, scary. what shouldn't we be planting now, do you think, well, with I, that in mind? I, Bearing I mean, in mind you want your tree to be around in 50 years. Yeah, what, what we should be doing is um, planting diverse, diversity. So we, we need a mixture of species. We've got to go away from monotypic plantings of a single species. So we've got to mix it up. 
I, yeah. I, I refer to the 10, 20, 30 rule. So that's, we should be planting no more than 10% of the same species, no more than 20% of the same genus, and no more than 30% of the same family in a, pl in a planting scheme. Very wow. difficult to do, wow. but it's a good discipline. Wow. And that Isn't that going to be a Dolly mixture effect? When you think of people like Capability Brown, oh, who yeah. do these beautiful... But he, he was, but he was still, even then, he was looking at what palette of tree oh, species yes. he had. So he was planting mm. London Plains, horse chestnuts, tulip trees cedars. that were all, and cedars, were all mm. available. Evergreen Sweet oak. chestnut, walnuts, evergreen yeah. oak, and integrating them with, with natives like the limes. Yeah, you're right. And, and created yeah. a fantastic... And, but, you know, we've still got this thing about we should only be planting natives. We've got to plant, we can integrate the two, but yeah. we can't stick with natives. So you wouldn't, so the ones that you think are going to suffer, what well, you were saying, birch? Yeah, the small, what we call the pioneer species. So birches, rowans, mallas, um, they, they're, they're short, they're short lived. They don't invest in, in building a, a framework, etc and they're they're more they, they live together so they're they're in populations where they shared and help each other in a natural situation yeah. but what we do we take them out of that comfort zone and plant them in a car park or in a street situation and they, they're just not going to like these high uv levels or mm. they're going to dry out too quickly mm. right. and what we're going to need is canopy cover so yeah. when we you know we we sat under my apple tree or my next door neighbor's apple tree actually that comes over my garden which i love yeah um we sat under that and and then when we walked out from under it we felt that sheer heat mm. so the average canopy of a big shed tree like an oak or a beech or a hornbeam um are gonna it will reduce the air temperature by about 70 to 8 degrees yeah and we're massive. gonna we're gonna need that if we're gonna if we're going down the route of barcelona we're gonna we're gonna need to do that and also they filter all the dust, yeah. which is nice, yeah. and they purify the air, yeah. they belt the, out the oxygen. The bigger oxygen. the tree, the, the, the more benefit we get to our ecosystem services. And they keep us warmer in the winter, you know, they help yeah. filter the winds, reduce yeah. the wind chill factor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we should be planting Big ahead trees, a lot more. Shared trees. And, yes. and we need to diversify. So I like all the, all the tree species from the east coast of North America, from the Caucasus, um, from the west coast of North America, tulip trees, tulip trees, trees sweet gums, and, yes. the red oaks, yes. are all, you know, cork the pin oaks, oaks cork, cork oaks, oaks, fantastic, Mediterranean species. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. so we're changing our palette. Yeah. Well, Tony, it's fantastic. So I'm, I've loved looking at your garden. Thank I you. see you've got a little area in the back yeah. where you're going to start that's, growing tree that's seeds. That's going to be my nursery this autumn. So yeah. when, when you come to dinner with me, you won't bring me a cheap bottle of wine I or won't. a nice bottle of wine. <laughs> I'll bring you a nice bottle. <laughs> yeah. No, if I, whenever I go, I'm invited to dinner, uh, I, never take, I never take a bottle of wine. I, I, it could be an insult, actually. So, <laughs> well, I, so when I, you go and visit I, someone like Baron de Rothschild. Uh, well, so at Chateau Lafitte, where I, I was invited last year, <laughs> yes. uh, that would have been an insult. Yes. Uh, I, 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 took, I took three trees. Very nice. Yeah. What did you take him? I took him a stiff nilobium, uh, so the, uh, the Japanese scholar tree. It used to be a soft ridge upon it. Right, yeah, oh, it's it's the yeah. I love it. Great tree, yeah. loves this climate, going to be one for the future, good for late pollinating insects. I took him a polyotherosis. Just the, just the Sephora Japonica. I remember they used them on the Span estates. Eric yeah. Lyons used them. And yeah. they're like a small Robinia Sudacacea with a yeah. translucent foliage. Same family, pea family. Beautiful trees, yes. Beautiful. Lovely. Nice Next green one. bark. Yeah, I took a, um, the um, polyotherosis, a small polyotherosis, a sibling of... Oh, right, a yeah. sister of this one. Yeah. Uh, and I took a conifer, um, an Arizonica, a uh, Capressus Arizonica. Mm. So three trees that I think will be good for the future and oh. do well in Bordeaux. Well, that's solved all my Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah. Invite me to dinner, yeah. Bonnie, and I'll, uh, and I'll bring you a surprise. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tony. It's been lovely to see it. Thank you.